Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we're going to be looking at bi accounting for biological asset and or agricultural activity. This is IAS 41. It's covered in international accounting. I'm not sure how much it will be covered on the CPA exam, but it will be beneficial to learn about this topic. As always, I would like to remind you, my viewers, to connect with me. If you have a LinkedIn account, please connect with me. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, I strongly suggest you create one. It's very important for your professional image and network ability. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. This is where I house all my lectures. Please like my lectures, share them, put them in the playlist, let the world know about them. If you're benefiting from my lectures, I have over 1,500 accounting, auditing, and tax lectures. Others might benefit as well. This is my Instagram. I'm trying to grow my Instagram. This is my Facebook. I do have some product on Gumroad, and this is my website. So the first thing we want to learn about is what are biological assets, because the topic is about biological assets. Biological assets are assets that are living plant or animals owned by a business for agricultural activity. So it's either living plant or animal. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about chicken, cannabis plant, corn, cow, horse, tomatoes. All of these are considered biological assets. Now, they are owned by a business for the purpose of agricultural activity. Now, we need to define what is agricultural activity. Well, agricultural activity is the management by an entity for the purpose of biological transformation, which is growth of a biological asset. We already know what biological assets for the purpose of sale. For example, you might be growing cannabis plant to sell them. So that's a biological asset, and the process is a trans the transformation process, the growth process is an agricultural activity. Or you have a biological transformation, which is a form of reproduction of a biological asset for the purpose of creating additional biological asset. So that's another definition of agricultural activity. What does that mean? Well, there we go. You have a chicken and a hen, and they create new chicken. So now you are creating new biological asset and or biological transformation of a biological asset for the purpose of harvesting agricultural produce from that asset. Now, what is harvesting? Harvesting is when you detach the product from the biological asset. For example, notice here we are milking the cow. The milk itself is the agricultural product and the process of milking is called harvesting. So all of these are considered agricultural activity. So biological transformation result in qual qualitative as well quantitative. So quantitative means you have more units. Um, qualitative, for example, this cow might grow or even might die for that matter, but it's qualitative. And notice here the quality of the plant will change. So biological transformation results in both qualitative and quantitative. Now what does the application of IAS 41 applies to. So what does it apply to? Simply put, we need to know what does it apply to. Well, the standard applies to account for the for the following when they relate to agricultural activity. Now I have to be really specific. What does it apply to? Biological assets. So it applies to biological assets. What are biological assets? Living plant and living animals, except bearer plants. Now what is bearer plants? We're going to talk about bearer plants in a moment. So any biological plants, any plant, tomato, corn, anything like that, any animal, that's biological plants. And, and section AIS section 41 applies. So biological assets are living animal and plants. Now what are bearer plants? Bearer plants versus consumable plants is a living plant that used in the production of su or supply of agricultural produce. So it's going to be giving us agricultural produce. But hold on a second. When the tomato plant give us agricultural produce? and expected to bear produce for more than one period. So here's the kind of where it's kind of, it's a little bit different than consumable plant. Here's me and my son collecting cherries. This is when he was around six months old. Okay, and this is the cherry tree and I'm collecting cherries. This is my son and I, now he's three years old and believe it or not, this is the same agricultural tree. So notice two years later, we are still collecting the cherries, this is the agricultural produce from the same tree. This is a bearer plant. In other words, it's there. It was there, expected to bear produce for more than one period, for multiple period. 
and has a remote likelihood of being sold as agricultural produce except for incidental scrap sales. For example, eventually this this cherry uh, this cherry tree will eventually uh, dies away, maybe 10, 15 years down the road. Then they'll have to cut it, maybe they will sell the, the wood or maybe they use the wood for something else, okay? But that's not what the tree is for, okay? The same thing would applies to apples, which is I like to also pick up, pick my own apples. It applies to peaches, it applies to plums, same exact concept. Those are bearer plants. Now what are consumable plants? Well, that's my son and I also. Now we are harvesting strawberry. See that field right here? This is a strawberry field. We're harvesting strawberry. Also, here's my son and I, we are harvesting corn. Now guess what? If I go back next year to that corn field, oh by the way, this tree right here is from the movie Shawshank Redemption. Okay? Just kidding, but it's it resembles it, right? You guys see that? Alright, now it's one of my favorite movies. Now, if I go back to that strawberry field, or if I go back to that corn field, this is what it would look like. Nothing. Just every year, they it's a consumable plant. They remove the whole thing, and they will start over again. So it's not a bare plant, like an apple tree, like a cherry tree. Same thing applies to the cannabis plant. Cannabis plant are considered consumable. So every year, they have to, um, they have to plant them. Same concept applies. Also, AIS41 AIS apply to agricultural produce. What are agricultural produce? Milk, eggs. What comes out of the biological asset? What can you detach from a biological asset at the point of harvest? Tomatoes, so on and so forth. It also applies to conditional and unconditional grant relating to biological asset measure at fair value, less cost to sell. So conditional grant from the government, sometimes the government might give you a money for the purpose of agri for agriculture purpose or for the purpose of farming AIS 41 will apply it tells you when is it revenue when do you have to wait whether whether it's revenue or not so just we don't have to worry about this and just I'm not going to cover this FYI okay now here are some examples of biological assets once again sheep you get wool out of the sheep trees you get fat and by the way the wool eventually they will form into a yarn and you can turn it into carpet many other product trees felled trees you can turn it into lumber and this is a picture of mine and this is some felled trees and I was you know this is this picture in the mountains of Lebanon I don't remember what year it was a springtime I was helping my brother clean clear some land and we plant a cherry tree so we did not put a parking lot or something like that so we plant trees but we need to remove the old trees that doesn't produce anything so I happen to be there and this picture was taken um, dairy cattle milk okay cutting plant grapevine those are all biological asset and th this is the agricultural produce the harvested produce from a biological asset what can you get out of the biological asset AIS 41 does not apply to the following, so you might you have to know this. Land related to the agricultural activity. So here we go. You have the land, and you have, I'm really bad at planting, and this is a tree. This is a tree, which is a biological asset, and this is the land. Those are two separate assets. The land is the land itself, and the tree is the tree. So the, the doesn't, it doesn't relate, AIS, AIS 41 does not relate to the tree. Remember, it relates to biological asset. The land is not a biological asset. Also, it doesn't apply to bearer plants. This could be a bearer plant. This could be an apple tree. Okay? It doesn't apply. However, it applies to the produce. So there's apples in that tree. Those are, are agricultural produce. AIS, AIS 41 applies to those produce. It doesn't apply to government grant related to bearer plants. Again, bearer plants, they follow a different rules. They follow AIS 16. Intangible asset related to agricultural activity. Any intangible asset, that's an intangible, separate intangible asset. It has nothing to do with biological asset. Any right of use arising from a lease of land relating to agricultural activity. Anything that has to do with the lease or the right use of, a, of an asset, that's, that's a lease, that's a separate asset. Okay, so it doesn't apply to those. Recognition, okay, an entity shall recognize a biological or, or, or agricultural produce when the following exit. Basically like an asset. When do you recognize an asset? When the entity controls the asset as a result of a past event. For example, you could purchase a cow, okay? Or from, you can get a cow from procreation. Once you have that cow and you could use that cow either to milk it um, or for whatever reason you want to, um, whatever reason you need to, 
it's you have it under control two it's probable that future economic benefit associated with the asset will flow to the entity for example milk production you have the cow and the future benefit is milk production and obviously you have to have the fair value or cost of the asset can be measured reliably okay if you bought the cow well you have you know how much you paid for it and if it's a baby calf it's what's the fair value if the cow was uh, 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 procreated okay so basically this is if you bought it you know how much it is and this is a baby calf for example you did not buy it but what's the fair value okay what's the fair value measurement we have two type of assets biological asset and agricultural agricultural asset biological asset Okay, cow, chicken, cotton plant, so on and so forth, shall be measured in, on initial recognition and at the end of reporting period at fair value, less cost. What does that mean? It means you have to report it at fair value, but less cost to sell. It's either at the initial as well at the end of every period. Okay? When there is no fair value, then you have to determine cost. Or cost minus deep minus accumulated depreciation minus impairment if you don't know the fair value. Agricultural asset, what are we talking about here? Agricultural produce harvested, such as eggs, milk, apple, cherries, those are extracted from the biological asset. Again, they should they're supposed to be reported at fair value, less cost to sell at the point of harvest. At the point of harvest. So when you collect them, you report them at fair value. Um, Let's just kind of look at an example. Let's assume a farmer harvested, uh, just for the sake of example, 100,000 bushels of uh, uh, bushels of corn. Okay, and let's assume the fair market value per bushel is three dollars. Well, you have three hundred thousand dollar on your hand. Okay, and let's assume the cost to sell is minimal. Let's assume it's zero. There's no cost to sell. Someone just they will show up and they'll pay you three hundred thousand. Just just to keep the example, just keep to keep the example simple, so you understand. And basically, this is I'm just trying to illustrate the concept. So, what do you do when when you when, what, what does the farmer do? And this is basically a concept. It doesn't have to be one hundred percent this way, but basically, they will debit some sort of an inventory account three hundred thousand. And they will have a gain of 300,000 gain. You want to call it gain, you want to call it revenue, it doesn't matter. Now, the cost to grow those, the, the corn, the corn will be already recorded. So, this is gain, but there's also cost, but we're not recording the cost here. We're only recording the gain or the revenue. Let's assume someone shows up the next day and paid this farmer $300,000. Okay? So, somebody paid $300,000. We debit cash $300,000. And we credit the inventory three hundred thousand dollars. So basically, the inventory is gone. Basically, we sold the corn for three hundred thousand dollars. Now let's assume that did not happen. Let's assume instead um, nobody bought the corn and we kept the corn. And a year later, the price of bushel went to three. Make it three thirty. 330. Now the price of bushel is 330 a year later at the end of the period. Now you have 100,000. Now you have to calculate the fair value which is 330,000. So what you have now is you have an inventory, an additional 30,000 and you have sorry, a gain of 30,000. Sorry. Let's assume the price of the per bushel went down to 270 instead. Then you have 270,000. Now you have you have a loss of 30,000 and you reduce your inventory by 30,000. Now is this exactly how it happens? This, is this exactly how it happens? No, because remember there's a cost of sell. I'm just giving you the concept so you understand what does it mean fair value less cost to sell. Just for simplicity I'm keeping the cost to sell out. There must be, there could be transportation cost to sell. You might have to transport this agri, this uh, this corn to the market, it might cost you $3,000, then guess what? You don't have $300,000 in inventory, you have two ninety-seven. dollars It's the, the fair value minus the cost to sell. So FYI, you know how it works, okay? And once you have the inventory, an inventory, then AIS2 inventories might apply to that inventory, okay? Subsequent, subsequent measurement, the same thing. You have to find the change. What happened from the fair value minus less, less cost to sell from the beginning of the period, till the end of the period, fair value minus the cost to sell. And anything should go into the profit and loss. So whatever you have again, it goes into the profit and 
profit and loss statement. It goes in the income statement. Okay. Again, if there is no fair market value, then you know if there is no fair market value, then you have to use the cost minus depreciation. They have to depreciate that asset. Now, when do you start depreciating that asset? That's another different story. When it mature. Okay, what does it mean when it mature? It means it's ready to produce what it's supposed to produce. So if you have a baby cow, if you're just born, you don't you don't depreciate it because it's not really producing anything to you. You'll have it at cost. But once that baby cow became a cow and you're milking it and it's producing, then you will start to depreciate it. It matures. Same thing with an apple tree. When you plant an apple tree, it may take five, seven, I think eight years for the apple tree to start producing. Well, it, it doesn't mature until later. So you don't depreciate that asset until it mature, okay? You might have a loss on the initial recognition of a biological asset because the cost to sell are deducted in determining the fair value, um, less the cost to sell. Now, what does that mean? It means let's assume you bought a cow, just I don't know how much the cows go for. I'm just gonna say $1,000, but I really don't know. Uh, $1,000, you, you bought the cow for $1,000. Now to resell that, that cow today, you have to you have to take it to the market. You have to pay transportation cost. You have to pay commission, and you have to pay admission fee to the market. So you have to pay in total two hundred dollar. Okay, so you paid for it a thousand, but it's if you really want to sell it, fair value less cost to sell is eight hundred. So up front, kind of in a sense, let's look at the journal entry. The journal entry would look something like this: you paid a thousand. The cow should be valued at 800 and you have a loss of $200. Now, hold on a second. You might be saying, why did I buy this cow if I'm going to record a loss? Well, you, you buy the cow for two reasons. Maybe you're going to you know, feed this cow and this cow is going to grow quanti qualitatively. Okay, a year from now, this cow, it's, it's heavier. It has more meat. It, uh, and th therefore, the cow, the fair value of the cow might become 1500 So that's why you bought it. You know, although you're taking a loss if you want to sell it today, okay? Also, you're going to milk that cow. You're going to have agricultural produce from it. So that's why you bought it. You're going to make up this. So just in case you're wondering, why would I buy something and record the loss? Well, because you buy it for future use, okay? So, uh, again, may arise on the initial recognition of a biological asset, such when a calf is born. So again, the same concept. When a calf is born, let's assume the calf is worth $100. Then if you want to sell it today, it's going to cost you $25 cost to sell. Therefore, it will be recorded at $75. Again, we don't depreciate it because it's not producing anything until later. Agricultural product, you know, again, or a loss arising on the initial recognition of agricultural produce at fair value again less cost to sell should be included in the profit or loss so when you harvest that asset you you would record it at cost minus cost to sell at, at fair value minus cost to sell now if fair value is not measurable is not available if the fair value is not available is not initially measurable biological asset should be recorded at cost less accumulated depreciation and impairment basically you just it's, it's an asset it's recorded at cost and when it comes to cost it's cost minus depreciation accumulated depreciation let's take a look at this um, uh, let's take a look at this uh, balance sheet this is for canopy growth corporation which is uh, they have the, the uh, cannabis plant this is their biological asset notice you have to go to note 5 this is their amount and notice they have account receivable cash and receivable but notice the biological asset this is a biological asset and the biological their biological asset is considered the current asset because they expect to sell it within the next to convert it to cash in the next 12 months it's not part of you know property plant and equipment okay Overview of biological assets, simply put, IFRS require company to carry biological asset at fair value minus cost to sell with revaluation, gain or loss recognized in the income statement. Now, the U.S. gap, except, of course, for bearer plants, for bearer plants, either you could use the cost model or the revaluation model. But remember, if you're using the revaluation model, it goes into OCI for the bearer plants because it follows IAS 16, which we talked about already, not in this recording, but in another recording. U.S. GAAP did not explicitly uh, establish fair value for biological asset, although some agricultural commodity may be, mar may be, may be marked 
to market in certain cases. What does that mean? It means for certain, I'm not gonna get into this topic, I do have another recording for another course about it, under certain circumstances, certain commodity, as long as they have an established market. Like for example, the corn. If you wanna know how much the corn is worth today, then you can go on any website and you say, you know, how much the corn is selling at, or soybeans, or anything like that. There's a, there's a market prices readily available. If that's the case, then once you harvest that product, then you can market to market, just like similar to the IFRS so under certain circumstances. Here's some presentation and disclosure. I'm not gonna read over this. You can look at it, you can pause, read it. Additional presentation and disclosure. You have to reconcile everything. You have to tell us you know, what, what biological assets you have, their different classification, what happened to them, did they increase in qualitatively, quantitatively, so on and so forth. And here's some presentation and disclosure about any grants received by the gov from the government you know did you fulfill the conditions did not fulfill the conditions um the nature of the grant the purpose of the grant so on and so forth so hopefully this is a, an overview about ais 41 and again there's a lot of pictures of me in this uh, recording just i wanted to uh, illustrate the concept so i find that you know maybe helpful that you guys will uh, would like would like the pictures if you have any questions about this recording, please email me. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. Good luck and study hard, especially if you're studying for your CPA exam.